Hello everyone. So let us start with uh, evolution and taxonomy today. So in this uh, entire uh, portion, we have these topics like evolutionary thoughts, origin of life, mechanism of evolution, animal behavior, taxonomy and classification. So we will start today with uh, evolutionary thoughts and then we will move on to the next topics. So in that first we need to understand what is exactly evolution. So I think all of you are familiar with the term evolution. So evolution means actually the changes or the series of changes in a particular species uh, through generations, uh, generations after generations which uh, they have because of some changes in the environment. So changes in the environment force certain changes in the species and that change is called as evolution so like from the time of the beginning until today whatever changes we have come across as a human being because of the uh, change in the ever-changing environment and also because of certain natural uh, and external factors we have come across a lot of changes right so like right from the beginning like ape man to today's human we have come across a lot of changes and this overall uh, change together is known as evolution so based on this evolution several uh, group of scientists gave several kinds of theories so the first theory that we are now going to discuss is lamarckism so uh, Lamarck is a very popular name in the evolution, evolutionary history actually. So he was a French biologist. His full name was Jean Baptiste de Monet Lamarck. So this uh, theory given by him is also known as theory of inheritance of acquired characters. So let us understand what was the idea behind this theory. So Lamarck first gave this theory and is published, it was published in 1809 in this book called Philosophy Zoologic. So in this book, he uh, discussed about this theory, which is uh, based on the use and disuse of characters. So he gave two main postulates. One is use and disuse. Like the species whatever the organs that they are using is considered as use and whatever they are not using is considered as disuse so by means of use and disuse organisms tend to select which organs they will keep in the next generation and which organs will be omitted in the next generation so the organs which are in use very much they will be transmitted to the next generation and those organs which are not in use that much those will be omitted in the next generation so this was the theory given by him and also inheritance of acquired traits so individuals which uh, the traits or the characters which they acquire during their lifetime which will that means the characteristics which they were not born with but they have acquired that throughout their lifetime that they can transmit to the next generation so this was the theory given by him given by Lamarck and you can uh, understand this with the help of a very simple example like the giraffe snake. So the giraffe snake was suppose it had a very short neck and therefore when it tried to reach the leaves higher up on the tree it could not. So it keeps stretching the neck to reach those leaves and stretching and stretching makes its neck very very strong and long. So this character of a longer neck is now the acquired character in the lifetime of this giraffe. So it will now understand that this longer neck character is very useful. So therefore it will keep this longer neck character and it will transmit this character to the next generation. So the next generation of giraffes will also have longer necks. This was the theory given by Lama. So it will, it's a theory based on the principle that physical changes in organisms during the lifetime such as greater development of an organ through increased use because the neck has an increased use in the lifetime of a giraffe that could be transmitted to the offspring. So basically an internal urge 
some environmental changes like the leaves in the lower lower branches have already been eaten by some animal so it needs to uh, stretch its neck to reach the leaves of the upper branches so therefore this is a new kind of need and therefore there will be disuse of some organs and use of some, some organs in this case the neck is used much better so these structures develop better and this character is inherited or in the next generation so this is an origin of a new species so in this way the giraffe's long neck came into existence according to lama so what were the basic postulates of lamarckism so new needs like i've already said changes in the environment trigger some new needs in the organism so to fulfill those needs they make some extra efforts or special changes they need some special things in their uh, body so for that they can use certain organs and say they can just discard certain organs so with this use and disuse this character some characters or some organs develop much better than the other and those better organs or uh, characters they are inherited by the next generation as well so that they can also fit the changed in environment easily now that leads to a different kind of species new characters accumulate generation after generation so a new species is formed so this is the theory given by lama this is also known as lamarckism now what is the significance this was the first theory of biological evolution and it also explains the existence of vestigial organs like we have certain vestigial organs like the appendix etc so those organs uh, are not in use anymore therefore we have uh, th therefore those are not needed and uh, although it is passed on to the next generation but still we don't have any use of that so it explains the development of strong jaw muscles and claws in carnivores due to their continued extra use in stimulated other biologists to look for mechan other mechanisms as well because now the lamarck's theory when it came scientists started discussing about it and also they were apprehensive about it so now they started to find out whether lamarckism has any truth behind it or not whether it is acceptable or not so next came the criticism of lamarckism so <clears throat> before going into that there was certain uh, let us discuss what is the demerits of lamarckism so like uh, he has already he already uh, stated that a blacksmith through his work will strengthen the muscles in his arms now his sons will have similar muscular development but we now know that it is not necessary like a blacksmith son cannot be born with the same strong muscles in the arms and all that it is just not possible a back blacksmith's uh, son can be anything else also uh, or uh, he or she might not have the physical stature of becoming a blacksmith as well so this is not uh, correct that we know so what are the demerits the demerits are lamarck suggested that the tendency to increase in size not only without any but also through a reduction in size so evolution proceeds by uh, like reduction in size of certain things as well as increase in size of certain things so he did not talk about the reduction in size of organs he only talked about the increase in size of organs and also he stated that new organs result from new needs which is quite false the animal leads to for the like the animal leads to the formation desire of the animal leads to the formation of new structures is definitely not true so like uh, today i cannot just uh, say that uh, okay i want to fly and i cannot develop wings this is not possible so this uh, statements are not uh, correct right so therefore the there, there was obviously some chances of criticism of lamarckism and also uh, he said that inheritance of characters acquired during the lifetime of an individual uh, is will be passed on to the next generation so that is also not true so now let us come to the criticism of lamarckism and find out why lamarckism was not accepted by many scientists and why they uh, like um, count countered the theory is given by lamarck so this in short is the theory of evolution given by lamarck and which is known as lamarckism 
Now, what are the problems related to it? So, August Wiseman, he first uh, proposed the theory of uh, theory of continuity of germplasm in 1892. This theory states that there are two types of cells in a, any multicellular organism. One is the germ cells and the other is the somatic cells. So we all know germ cells are those cells which can be, are those cells like gametes uh, which can be, um, which have genes which can be passed on to the next generation, to the offspring. And other cells are somatic cells which are not part of the genes that are, uh, which have, have genes which are not part of the, like directly transmitted to the next generation. So the environment affects only the somatic cells so link between generations so two generations are linked by germ cells only that we all know that gametes uh, fuse and therefore the genes present in the germ cells only are transmitted to the next generation so these characters which are acquired during a lifetime of a species will be lost when it is the de when the de when there is a death of an organism and so these characters do not have any role in evolution so whatever will be transmitted will be there in the gametes only so a russian uh, bio physiologist he trained mice to come for food on hearing a bell he reported that this training is not inherited and was necessary in each generation. So whenever you have to train a mice, a new mice, or that you have to come out for food when you hear a bell. So obviously the next generation mice will not know about that. That is also very common sense because uh, when you train one generation of mice, the other generation of mice do not know about it. So next generation you have to again train them in order to see the same character or same trait. So Wiseman performed one experiment, which is very popular experiment. He designed an experiment to test whether Lamarck's theories were correct or not. So he cut off the tails of mice and then he allowed those tailless mice to breed. So this is the male mice which tail cut off. This is the female mice with tail cut off. And now when they are breeding, the after even after 19 generations or 20 generations of mice he followed that and he observed that each time the mice that were born the offsprings both have always they had tails so now the tailless uh, gene is not passed on to the next generation so it is not dependent on whether the parents had any accident or whether the parents acquired a tailless character or anything. It does not matter, but the offsprings will always have tails. So this, uh, from, from this experiment, it was quite natural that Lamarckism theory is not correct. So the next set of scientists they started um, like giving a postulates and they started combining Lamarckism with environmental factors environmental influences and then they combined this theory and termed it neo Lamarckism which is a new form of Lamarckism or a modification of Lamarck's theory. So neo Lamarckism what are the postulates behind it so this is the environment is the driving force of evolution so that means that uh, change in the environment brings about certain changes in the germ line or in the germ cells uh, of the organisms and those germ cells can uh, have some genes which can be transmitted to the next generation. So somatic changes are result of interaction among genes and environment. So the environmental changes directly influence the germ cells and the germ cells, they carry these acquired variations and they transfer them to the offsprings. The germ cells are directly affected by the environmental factor. So bringing in the environmental factor aspect, this theory of Lamarckism was changed. So now what is the new theory? Neo-Lamarckism states that it does not recognize any internal vital force. That means that the desire of the organism is not at all important over here. Whatever the organism wants is not, not an important. But what the environment is forcing the organisms, how it is affecting the organism, that is important. So use of uh, disuse, uh, use and disuse of organs is 
major factor in Lamarckism, but in neo Lamarckism, use and disuse is not that important. Also, neo Lamarckism made it very clear that germ cells and somatic cells are two different kinds of cells which, uh, uh, which are a part of a multicellular organism. But in case of Lamarckism, those two cell types were not distinguished clearly. And also, Lamarckism believed that all characters acquired in the lifetime of a species will be inherited to the next generation. But neo Lamarckism states that only those variations that affect the germ cells directly, those characters will be inherited. Because it is quite obvious whenever the gamete is affected by something, then only it will be passed on to the next generation. So, based on this, Neo Lamarckism had certain scientists favoring it, and therefore, Neo Lamarckism experiments were performed. So, it was seen that this is a stickleback fish, then these are bony plates. That whenever the stickleback fish is kept in the fresh water, it develops the bony plates, and this is an acquired character. This is inherited by its offspring as well. But uh, if uh, the is, sorry, if the freshwater fish is taken to the sea, it develops the bony plates, and if the marine fish is brought to fresh water, it loses all the bony plates. So this is solely based upon the environment, and this is also the environmental effect on the uh, on these organisms. Next is the potato beetles. So potato beetles, they uh, they show that they have direct effect on the environment on the germ cells, but no change in somatic cells. Also, there were experiments performed by Summer, and he reared albino mice at high temperature. And then the mice, which uh, have in uh, which were reared in high temperature, they have longer body, longer hind limbs, longer tail. So these abnormalities were transmitted to offsprings as well. So its offsprings also had longer body, longer hind limbs, longer tail. So that means that temperature of the environment plays a crucial role in the this kind of phenotype of the mice. Also, this MacDougall's experiment was very important. He trained the rats to escape uh, from a, uh, from this cylinder, like rod-shaped cylinder. And he trained the rats that you have to escape on a route where there is darkness. So, in the light, uh, in where, where, on the exit route where there is light, they when they go, they keep, uh, they keep shock. So this is an electrical shock given when the mice comes here. But when it goes here, there is a treat kept here. So the mice were trained such that you have to go to the path where there is darkness and not light. So this was inherited uh, in some generations and in some mice. Uh, in some gen next generation, the number of mice that uh, were dead by shock became less and less. So now the question is whether the mice uh, transmits this uh, character like going towards the darkness to the next generation or not. So acquired diseases also are transmitted from one generation to other. So these are the experiments in favor of neo Lamarckism. So let us move on to theory about natural selection by Darwin. So Charles Darwin, like uh, we all know that the theory of evolution given by him is known as Darwinism. So Darwinism uh, is a theory which includes all these things. So he had the ship in which he started his voyage was HMS Beagle and he wrote this book Origin of Species and in this book, he mentioned about variations, like variations or uh, within a species, they uh, can be like, uh, they can exist within a, or not different kinds of variations exist within, within the population and those variations can be transmitted or in, inherited by the next generation. Malthusian doctrine means organisms produce more offsprings than one can survive. So what, whatever the holding capacity is there of the environment, organisms tend to produce more organ, uh, offsprings than that. This is known as prodigality of production. 
and of course there will be competition for a limited resource because li resource is limited but the number of species uh, which has to use that resource is very very high so therefore there will be always competition some kind of competition between the species to take over that resource struggle for existence and of course with competition comes the advantage one will be advantageous the other one will be disadvantageous because one will obviously win and take over that resource and the other species will obviously lose and will not have any access to the resource so what is the limitations this was the theory given by darwin like prodigality of uh, or overproduction then constancy of number the size of the population remains more or less constant because they have to compete among themselves that, that there is uh, what we call the struggle for existence and survival of the fittest so wh whoever the fittest is the uh, struggle will ultimately give the fittest winner be bring the fittest as the winner and therefore the fittest one will be surviving at the end so there is also intraspecific and interspecific struggle like competition between two species is known as interspecific competition between the uh, like members of a one species only is known as intraspecific competition between the species and bit and the environment against the environment because when the environment is not very favorable then you have to fight against the environment also so that is known as environmental struggle so what are the merits and demerits of darwinism so the major achievement is that uh, it was able to recognize the adaptation or natural selection like the nature will select the one which is the fittest and also the organism has to adapt to the changes in the environment so this theory was given by him so that today also it stands correct right so the modern concept of uh, darwin's uh, natural selection is uh, is there but still the original form of the whatever darwin suggested was also there now darwinism or natural selection does not account for the beginning of organs so it does not tell you how the organs came into existence like Lamarck, he told specifically that some organ, new organs developed and all that. Those things were not given by Darwin. Also, but the survival of the fittest and but not the arrival of the fittest. So we can say that how the survival of the fittest came into existence, but not how the fittest arrived. So the first arrival of the species, Darwin did not mention anything about it. So also Darwin did not consider the possibility of the origin of new hereditary variations. So they, these were a few limitations of Darwin's theory and uh, origin of life was unexplained. Also uh, there is no limits to uh, variation and no mechanism for sufficiently new characteristics. So these limitations of Darwin's theory led to the formation of Neo-Darwinism. So just like Neo-Lamarckism, Neo-Darwinism came into existence and that uh, was a modified version of Darwinism with respect to Mendelian genetics. So Mendel's Mendelian genetics I had already discussed in previous video. So it was more or less on the basis of what are generally transmitted to the next generation. So we uh, I have discussed about alleles and whatever how the genes are getting segregated and independent assortment and then they are packed into gametes and then transmitted to the next generation. So those uh, theory those those theories of Mendelian genetics came over here and therefore the scientists they started to combine these two like with mutation mendelian inheritance population genetics they tried to combine this together and they called it neo-darwinism so whatever the factors or the inheritance of different characters that was basically gene so people did not know that it was actually a genetic thing or a genotypic change but Mm, people only saw whatever external changes that was there but not the genotypic changes or the gene composition changes so 
uh, they only talked about the inheritance of characters but how these characters are inherited they did not know about that till mendelian genetics became popular so when Mendel gave, uh, explained his theory, it was quite clear that however the character is transmitted, like it, it should be transmitted uh, with the help of gametes. So Malthusian competition means overproduction. So therefore there will be limited resources and the competition will increase. So obviously natural selection will come into play and the survival of the fittest is going to happen. What about variation? There will be number of breeds, races and subspecies. Also mutations like small changes in individual characteristics. All those things come into play and there will be genetic variation and Mendelian inheritance. So two copies of the same gene, one from each parent. This is Mendelian inheritance or there will be genetic variation like alleles of individual genes combining to give continuous variations. So all time they are just combining randomly and therefore they are giving random variations. So uh, out of these two, so the modern... Um, So like I was saying that new Darwinism now came into existence like uh, so uh, whatever Mendelian genetics was there so Mendelian genetics combined with Darwinism was given rise to uh, neo Darwinism. So this is a uh, theory contributed by Huxley, Fisher etc. So these scientists they contributed to this theory and they uh, sort of like combined the Mendelian genetics with this. So like I was saying that Modern synthesis or neo-Darwinism came into existence by combining the genetic variation caused by mutation as well as the Mendelian inheritance and also the competition of over resources, therefore natural selection and also variation among different species and which leads to natural selection. All these gave rise to the modern synthesis or neo-Darwinism. Now, so what is the differences between like uh, New Darwinism and Darwinism. So definitely the Darwinism is by Charles Darwin and this is by other scientists. So it refers to an individual and this to a population and um, the variation causes are not explained by Darwin but here we can explain them by means of mutation theory and survival of the fittest but was given by Darwin. So differential reproduction and comparative reproductive success. So the reproductive isolation is an essential factor in new Darwinism which is not here and also the Darwinism does not include mutations and isolation but new Darwinism includes this mutation theory as well as genetic isolation. So this uh, comparison uh, dif uh, like uh, says that we can uh, change this Darwinism and bring a uh, modern light to it and therefore we can call it new Darwinism. Okay, so moving on to this uh, Darwinism versus Lamarckism. So uh, Darwin suggested that all species arise and develop through the concept of natural selection but Lamarck suggests that there is an internal force in all organisms and therefore the desire of one organism to use and disuse an organ leads to different acquired characters and those characters are inherited by the next generation. But Darwin does not suggest that. He suggests that there is no internal force in, involved but there is this uh, natural selection. Nature selects the one who is fittest for the struggle of existence and therefore after survival of the fittest those useful variations only will be transferred to the next generation. So this is an example like Lamarckism suggests that there will be longer necks of the giraffe and this longer neck will be transmitted to every generation. But Darwinism suggests that the shorter necked 
giraffes if there is any will be uh, like rejected by nature and only the longer neck giraffe will be selected by the nature and they will win in the struggle for existence because they can easily reach the food supply and therefore they will be uh, selected they will survive for generations after generations so this was the difference between these two popular school of thoughts and therefore the these two po very popular theories of evolution were uh, like we uh, we study about them and next is So here also if you see that natural selection favors longer necks therefore the this favored characteristic is passed on to the next generation and after many many generations this group is still variable but there is a general increase in the neck length. So variations will always be there. Whatever the trait is there will be some kind of variation but the variation will change with generation and those uh, characters which are favorable that will be passed on to the next generation but here in Lamar's view original there is a short necked ancestor it keeps stretching the neck and therefore stretching stretching becomes progressively longer and then this long neck descendant after many generations so this was the difference between these two uh, theories of evolution So two uh, different other theories are also there uh, which uh, like you should know about them. One is the uh, de Vries mutation theory that says that the mutation means a sudden change is taking place in the genetic composition of an organism. So these changes result in a large number of variations uh, across populations. So the that variations can be seen in a population or in a species and therefore when the when the mutations are quite uh, strong or quite significant then it gives rise to a different different species altogether a new species is established so he did his uh, proposed his theory by studying this plant called evening primrose and therefore this mutation theory was very popular in forming this neo darwinism theory and therefore the darwin's concept of variability within a species could be answered by this mutation theory other the other than this there is this wise man's germplasm theory so in his book uh, das keimplasma he uh, wise man he stressed the continuity of germplasm as the main criterion he suggested that there are two different types of cells one is the germ cells and the other is the vegetative cells or somatic cells so therefore Lamarck suggested the inheritance of acquired characters but inheritance is based on somatic cells but we know that evolutionary changes which are passed on from generation to generation is based on germ cells or uh, gametes so only when there is a change in the gamete uh, cell composition then only that change will be transmitted to the next generation or those will be considered as heritable variations so this is the germ plasm theory given by august weissman so with this i will end here today's video which is on evolutionary thoughts in the next video we will move on to origin of life okay thank you